live. Hello everyone, I'm Catherine from the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake and the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore. Today we have a customer request. We're going to talk about the blind hem. Okay, from up top, Miss Kelsey. So the blind hem is something that is formed by uh, your fabric being um, along the one edge you have these stitches formed and then it leaps over and grabs a fold and comes back. Stitches more formed, leaps over, grabs the fold and comes back. So that when you're all said and done, and then from up front, Kelsey, we end up with this little blind hem. So this blind hem is very obvious because I chose blue thread and took nice deep bites out of my fold so that you guys could see how it's actually formed. Now typically this is on the bottom of a skirt or a bottom of a nice pair of pants or the bottom of a curtain and no one's going to see it. If they get up close to you <laughs> and they're looking at that much bite, they're too close to your legs, okay? So this little blind hem is formed by creating the letter Z. Okay, from up top, Miss Kelsey. So, what do we have here? What we have is if this is the waist of your fabric and this is the hem of your fabric, you're going to have the wrong side of your fabric facing up and you're going to have the right side of your fabric facing down. And at the very bottom, here at the hem, you don't want any raw edges. That's the whole point of having a beautiful blind hem. So you're going to fold up the bottom little bit, like quarter of an inch or five eighths of an inch of your fabric. And then you're going to create the letter Z. It creates a fold. And what happens is this is your blind hem foot. There is a little bit of a guide on the foot, and I'll do an up close of that. So there's a little bit of a guide on the foot, and that guide is butted right up against this fold in your fabric, okay? So that's how it's created. All right, let's come over here and look at this foot. So if you can see here, there is a very large guide on the edge of the foot. So I'm going to guide my fold right up against that. All right, so let's look at how this is done from up front. So here we have our wrong, our wrong side up. Our right side, of course, would be down. This is the waist over here by this hand, and your hem would be down here by this end. Okay, so you're going to start by folding up the raw edge of your hem. Once you've got that, you're going to crease this one down on top of it like that. So now I have this kind of concealed uh, casing where I'm going to form my stitches. Okay, so let's do that one more time. If this is the wrong side of my fabric, this is the right side. I'm going to have my waist on this end by this hand and my hem over here. I'm going to fold the wrong sides together on this end, about a five eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch or whatever your pattern calls for. And then the top layer comes down this direction and it creates a little pleat there. So again, you kind of have the letter Z on the edge of your fabric, okay? So now, once you've got that created, you're going to butt the fold of the fabric right up against the guide bar on the R foot, all right? So what happens is it stitches along this part, jumps over and takes a bite of the fold, and then stitches some more along here, jumps over and takes a bite of the fold, etc. Okay, so let's look at the magic happen. So it's going to sew along the one side, and I just need to be responsible for keeping my fabric butt right up against that guide. And it leaps over and takes a bite. There it goes. Sews along on the right side, leaps over and takes a bite of the left. Sews along on the right side, leaps over and takes a bite on the left. There it goes. Okay. And then, of course, you would want to do your locking stitches, your reverse stitches, or whatever. So once that's done, you end up 
with this look on this inside of your pants. So again, it's got a straight line of stitches, it leaps over and takes a bite. Straight line of stitches, leaps over and takes a bite. Straight line, takes a bite. So that when you get to folding this down, so you have this nice bottom hemline, on this side you have little tiny bites inside your fabric. So this ends up being a blind hem. Because again, from up front, Kelsey, by front I mean like the big front, from this distance, no one's going to be able to see those little bites into the fold of your fabric. Okay? So that's how we do a blind hem. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching me. We have extra videos on our blog, on our website, www.sewing.net. Like this video, share it with your friends. We're going to have more education and inspiration on the way almost every day now. So thank you for taking the time to join us. Is there, oh, I have a question. What stitch do you use on the machine? It's actually a blind hem stitch. So let me grab this one back. Every machine has it in a different place and has a different number. This is what it looks like. So you have dots and then a mountain inside mountain. More dots and then an inside mountain. So this is what the stitch looks like when you're selecting it on your machine. It's called a blind hem stitch. This is the one that's typically used for woven fabrics. The one that's for zigzag fabrics actually has on the screen it looks more like this. It's a bunch of little wigglies and one big one, and a bunch of little wigglies and one big one. So that would be the one that would be for stretch fabric. But the one with the straight lines, boom, 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 peak, boom, 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 peak, that's the one you use for woven fabric, okay? So thank you so much again, everybody. I appreciate it. I'm glad I got to answer a question. Feel free to pop in and ask us questions if you're watching us live. Or if you're not live and you need a question answered, give us a call. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.